And I'm just going to piggyback off of that conversation, Brian. We're talking about AI and an important collaboration between Palantir and NVIDIA, the fact that they're joining forces not to just analyze data, but actually to uh, provide business decisions. And I, I just, Alex, I'm actually going to start with you, uh, the CEO of Palantir, just to explain, does that mean no human intervention? Can you just explain how this would work and use Lowe's as an example? Well, first of all, I'm delighted to be on the stage with uh, what many people I believe to be one of the great entrepreneurs of, of my lifetime and a patriot. Um, and it means a lot to me to be here. Um, uh, so we, we have a product called Ontology. You could think of it as uh, a, essentially a digital representative of your enterprise, including security model, which essentially takes the disabilities out of large language models and allows you to move decision making to the front line with people, without people, depending on how you're doing it. Um, in the context of loaves and, and other enterprises, it allows you to essentially automate decision making, like how would your supply chain work? How would it work if it changed? Uh, how do you get the cheapest good to the right place, given that there may be disruption? But in general, what's very, very special, I believe, about our, our partnership is we're going to be able to move 2x, and I think in the future even faster. So you get a much, much faster, and actually because you can control it in a more granular way, much faster, much cheaper. And then the macro thing that I'm actually most excited about, which for our country is, because of that you can do manufacturing in America, you can make the workers stronger and better, and you have more competition because you can use open weight models, open source models, you can use, you can use any hyperscaler, you can decide not to use a hyperscaler. This is much, much better for America, much better for workers, much better for industry. It's cheaper, it's faster, and obviously they have one of the world's top tech te teams and we work very well with them. So Jensen, just in, in regards to that collaboration, then who would actually be procuring the hardware? Is this like a company like Lowe's? Do they have to put the upfront cost, uh, you know, with their existing GPUs and then working with Palantir? Is that how it works? Or First of all, it's amazing to think that the Palantir ontology platform has achieved all of this. And they're the fastest enterprise growing platform in the world. Um, uh, in a lot of ways, it gives enterprises what we all want, which is intelligence and, and the ability to make good decisions fast. And, and now we're going to supercharge it with NVIDIA's accelerated computing for the first time. And so uh, NVIDIA's CUDA accelerated computing is going to get integrated. We're going to be able to put uh, NVIDIA's AI libraries on top of that and open source model that, that we're working on together in, into the ontology platform. And you'll run it in the cloud, any cloud, or you run it on-prem or even a private cloud. And so, as you know, NVIDIA runs everywhere. And so you could buy a server from HP or Dell. Uh, you could be in another country and you want to set up your own private cloud. We got no trouble with that. And, and so it doesn't matter. Uh, we run everywhere. And Palantir runs everywhere. But you're talking about the future then. So this isn't something that would be accretive to revenues just in the near term. You're still working it out. And like I know Lowe's is an example, but are there other customers? Well, at Palantir, we just do what's best for our customers. We work downstream for value creation. So what we believe, we know when it's faster, better, more accurate, and more flexible. And uh, creates a better future for them because they can choose how they want to run their applications. We'll do very well. And at Palantir, we, we're doing very well on revenue and profit. And we're, you know, that's not actually our primary motivation now. And the reason we've done so well on profit and on growth is because you just have to create value. This creates more value for the end user. Be and, but you just said before, too, that the human may not even be involved with some of these decisions. And I guess uh, that is a major concern in this day and age that uh, AI efficiencies could take away from or displace the job force. So yeah, couldn't well, something you, like this collaboration do that? Uh, you know, it's interesting. When you say humans don't have to be in the loop, that doesn't inherently mean there aren't cases where humans need to be in the loop. For example, 40 years ago, we had 40x that we had 40, we had 40 with 40x more manufacturing jobs than we have now. So it's like you can make more, you man, more manufacturing jobs, which are humans, working class humans. You can build things you couldn't build in the past. And those humans become more and more valuable than they were in the past. In the defense context, you have situations where humans have to be in the loop, offense, situations where humans shouldn't be in the loop, like defense. Our collaboration makes all those use cases better for workers, for manufacturing, for defense, for offense, and in general because it allows people to use any kind of model, any kind of compute structure. It makes America stronger and better. Whenever a business is more productive, whenever they can move faster, their business grows. They hire more people. Mm -hmm. And so, so I think this, this idea that, that AI uh, is going to take jobs is going to change everyone's job. That's for sure. But I think it's going to make companies more productive. We're more productive today because of AI. We're hiring more people.